Good morning, everyone, and thank you for tuning in today. I'm Jenna Stauffer. I'm going to start the show off today by talking about something that unfortunately has impacted so many people that we know and love. That's Alzheimer's disease. Now, it's estimated that 5.4 million Americans have it. More than half of Americans report being touched by someone who has it. One third of Americans are worried about getting it. It's the second most feared disease behind cancer. Those are definitely some scary statistics. Now, a few weeks ago, we talked with Dr. Becky from Brand New Day Enterprises about ways that we can reverse this disease. We're going to pick that discussion back up this morning. Dr. Becky, thank you for Hi. being back on the show. Thank you so much for asking me. Um, again, I want to kind of touch a little bit on what we talked about the last time because when people hear that they have Alzheimer's or that a loved one has Alzheimer's, rightfully so, they might think, oh, it's the end of the world because they don't know that new research shows that there are things that you can do to be proactive to, if you actively have Alzheimer's, to stop the progression and at least sustain, if not improve. And for those people that aren't diagnosed with Alzheimer's but have early onset symptoms, lots of really great proactive things that you can do to turn the tide. And last time I was on, I know we talked a little bit about mm -hmm. what are some things you can do to try to trick and rewire your brain. Simple things such as if you wear a watch on your left hand, wear it on your right mm -hmm. hand one or two days a week, or brush your teeth with a different hand, um, exercise. There were some breathing exercises too that we talked about where you will breathe in for let's say seven seconds, hold your breath for seven seconds, and then exhale mm -hmm. for seven seconds. Different things again that can change the tone of the brain so that we can rewire the brain to function better. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to remind people mm -hmm. that that is something that anybody can do right here, right now, so that they can minimize greatly their risks of um, getting Alzheimer's. But mm -hmm. what are some of the things that people need to be aware of too that they may not know to be concerned about? And that is there are two trace minerals that are so important for brain function. And those two trace minerals are zinc and iron. And we can go to any health food store in America today and we can buy zinc or iron. But what we really need to know is what are the ratios of the zinc and iron in the brain? There's some really great research that docs did, especially as it related to iron, because it's iron that's bound to the red blood cell that delivers oxygen to every cell tissue and organ in our body. Of course, the brain is the most important organ that is delivered to, with the oxygen. And so if your iron reserves are low, then you can't deliver enough oxygen to the brain. Mm -hmm. If you can't deliver enough oxygen to the brain, then you can't even hope for the brain to, to function well. Mm -hmm. But what research found when they realized, oh my gosh, zinc and iron are so important for the brain, people would just then start going to the health food store and would pick up zinc and iron. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, patients did not get better and some actually got worse. From taking the, the pills. Right. right. And so then the research came out and said, oh, see, the studies were flawed. These nutrients don't really help. Well, the reason that they didn't help is that nobody looked to see how much did each individual person need. Um, and so people were just going out and taking random amounts and too much zinc and too much iron is every bit as detrimental to our health mm -hmm. as not enough. And so, again, the good news is that there's a simple little test. Now, can you get blood drawn to see where your zinc and iron values are? Absolutely. Doing that requires, of course, you go to either the doctor's office or a lab and you get the blood drawn. And oftentimes, people are not a real big fan of, of right. getting their blood drawn. But the really cool thing is that with that little hair test, the same thing the lab can still, with a snippet of hair, and that, you know, people don't even have to go to the doctor to do that. They mm -hmm. can sit in the comfort of their own home, get some scissors, snip off a little bit of their hair, mail that off to the lab, and then the lab will send the mm -hmm. report back that will say, this is the amount of zinc you have, this is the amount of iron that you have, and then from there, you know exactly what it is that you need so that you can improve and empower your brain. And so that's the good news that I want people to know is they don't need to try to guess, stand at the health food store and wonder, well, what do I need and how much? Mm -hmm. And not only that, I wouldn't want to have them stand there and wonder because I wouldn't want them to do more harm than good. So 
really good research that says we know we need to make sure we've got the right levels of zinc and the right levels of iron. And what the medical community also discovered in this research, especially as it related to the zinc, was that especially our soils in America are so depleted. Zinc used to be so bountiful in the soil. So a lot of the fruits and vegetables that we ate naturally were loaded with zinc. But now because the soils are so depleted, there's very, very, very little zinc that's in the soil. Also, the environmental pollutants have um, prevented the zinc that's actually in the food to get into our bodies to work well. And then with the senior population, their poor GI tracts don't absorb nutrients near the same as what, how your body absorbs nutrients or how my body absorbs nutrients. And so that's another big concern is that the senior population isn't absorbing zinc or iron very, very effectively. And so with the test, when you see where the patients are, then you know you can be very specific. And the thing that's really nice with, uh, with the lab that I use especially is that the lab, in addition to saying what the dosing of the zinc or iron you might need, they'll also say, based on what's happening in your body, here are the foods that you should be eating more of to make sure that you're getting the right amount or you're getting from the zinc rich foods again our soils are depleted but there are still some foods out there that still s tend to hold on to zinc mm -hmm. and how nice if the patients would know when they're standing at the grocery store oh well i'm going to pick up some of these foods um beets typically tend to be a food that holds on to zinc really really well broccoli sprouts so before the broccoli flowers fully, which just when the, the plant first starts, tends to still hold on to zinc. Mm -hmm. Pecans tend to hold on to zinc very, very well. And clams. And so again, there are things, you know, some foods that people that might, help. oh gosh, absolutely. Well, we're running out of time right now. For more information though on this, you can check out the website or give Dr. Becky a call by calling the number that you see on the bottom of the screen. Dr. Becky, thank you for being here. Thank you on. very much. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. Stay with me.